guys and welcome back to Project Z Garage. My name is Ansar and today with my brother Al and Zeus is hanging out too. We are going to be continuing working on the brakes and showing you guys how to change the brakes on the rear of a 2010 ML350. Uh, if you looked at our last video, we ran into some issues. I ordered the wrong parts. It happens. If you're, especially when there's multiple sizes for the same vehicle, it happens. So supposedly, or from what I've read, there is a sports version or there is a sport package that you can get with the ML350 that come with bigger brakes. Now with the bigger brakes, you're running 350 millimeter rotors. My car here does not have that. It runs the 330 millimeter rotors. So you guys aren't gonna see the full upgrade that I wanted to show you with the drill, uh, drilled rotors and the Brembo brake pad. But what we're going to do is walk you through on how to change it and I'm going to show you the differences between the uh, vented rear rotors and the regular single uh, disc, I guess it would be considered a solid disc uh, rear rotor so you guys would know and don't make the same mistake I did. Now first things first, you got to take off your rear wheel, jack your car up, take the rear wheel off. Uh, I think these are, I forgot what the size for the wheel nuts are, I think they're they're on 17? No way. 7, 18? Be 19. 19 oh no, this is bigger than that. It's yeah. 19. So. 19 and a, and the lock is, is a small 18. There you go. So the lug nuts are a 19 millimeter. So you got to take those off. The wheels are off. Next. Coffee. Coffee. Great. <laughs> Next, uh, what we're going to have to do. Uh, there is a spring that holds this in that Al took off already. I did take it off already. Where did I make it fly to? That's a good question. We're going to yeah. have to search for that. One second while we look for that. All right, guys, slight intermission while we find the spring that was on here so we can show you how to remove it. So right now you can see it's on. Al's going to pry the top part of the spring This one off. slides out pretty easy because there's no hook on here. And then the bottom, you just angle it and pull it out. And that's it. And there we go. So that's the first step. Now the next thing we have to do to get the brake pads off and get the actual caliper away from the caliper bracket is to remove the sliders. Now the sliders are a size 7 millimeter. Yep. Uh, that is a Allen head. If you see that, the six sided one. There we go. And let me just lift this up and show you guys what it looks like. He pulled the caps off already. Yeah. So you would have to pull the rubber caps off or dust boot. And then you got to take the top and bottom uh, sliders off. And then that will make it so that you can remove the caliper from the carrier or caliper bracket, I believe is how they would state what that is. <sighs> All right. Now, we, what we did previously is apply a G clamp or a C clamp to the caliper to just push it in a little so that we can get it over the little lip on the rotor note that we also use the bleeder on the back so we open the bleeder a little bit into the suction press the caliper in and then close it back off under suction so we don't lose it make sure your reservoir never runs low definitely now now guys these sliders seem perfectly fine you could see they slide very easily that's the way it should be there's a little bit of tension but nothing that's binding it up otherwise that's how you get uneven brake wear from left to right all right this feels good that feels good yep so what we're gonna do is hang those up on some with a bungee cord I'm or gonna he's gonna hang it up on on the suspension so yeah. that we have no tension on there the brake line and then the next thing we're gonna do is take off the caliper bracket or the carrier as it's called it's an 18 millimeter and we have an 18 millimeter so we're gonna take the two big 18 millimeters off now these things are on tight so be sure to get yourself a breaker bar or something so you don't strain yourself or hurt yourself trying to take those uh those uh caliber bracket bolts off so there you go and then that's our caliper bracket all nice and taken off and the next thing we have to do is to remove our retaining uh, screw that holds our uh, rotor on. It is a T30. T30 
uh, what's what are, what do we call this? A Torx, right? Torx. It's a Torx. So we have a T30 Torx. Take that off. Remember, these things are on pretty good. It's got a lot of lo Loctite, blue and Loctite. This has some blue Loctite on it. We're so. gonna put a blue Loctite on all these things. As you can see, also the carrier bolts have blue Loctite on them. So we'll clean them up, put some Loctite back on them and tighten them down. There you go. Now, before you take this off, so you guys know, your handbrake does not work with the caliper. This actually has a brake shoe inside, inside of the rotor. And that's what opens, actually expands and presses on the inside drum that this uh, rotor has. So you gotta be careful when taking off. You don't wanna bang on this. Make sure your handbrakes are off. Uh, you don't have the handbrake pulled. And if you start pulling this caliper off and you feel like it's hanging up on something, you need to take this little rubber grommet out and you're gonna have to turn the wheel on the inside. You're gonna need a small screwdriver to press on it. Yeah, so when we take it off, we'll show you what it looks like. <sighs> And it's on that it's side. It's on the opposite side, so, so you're really screwed. If so that's you case. would have to turn the rotor until you see it. Yeah. But just so you see what it is, it's like a, it has. Yeah. Come, it has turn the rotor until you see it. So what'll happen is after you take out your set screw, you're gonna look into it and you gotta find it and you could press it with a small screwdriver. Yeah. To turn that wheel. Now I'm not sure if you have to turn it clockwise or up I'll or down. I'll show you which way you have to turn it. On this one, you've got to turn it this way to screw in upwards. So you're just gonna take your screwdriver. It's gonna hold on the lineup and you're pushing the top up and you'll be able to wedge it and turn this and it'll screw it down and by decreasing the width of this you reduce the size inside the drum to be able to pull it off and then let's just show the inside of the drum so they see what it looks like so there we go there's actually a drum Here, angle it down so we can see it so this is where your shoe actually rides on so it presses against here and this is what locks up your rear brakes when you press your handbrake or your foot brake on this truck now, over time, you develop a little bit of a lip here. So when you try to remove the rotor, it might hang up on that. And you don't want to force this because you can damage these shoes by, by putting that sideways force on it and you could damage it and, and it won't hold right anymore. So be sure to be careful and, and to do it properly by uh, uh, actually closing the shoe in a little bit to make some room to get the rotor off. Now, after we're done and we put the new rotor on, what we're going to have to do adjust. is we're going to have to adjust it so that it's all the way up to where you can't turn it and then you'll do one or two clicks back where you don't feel any drag Correct. when you turn the rotor. All right, guys. So we're going to clean up the hub face here with some uh, scotch Brite or a little bit of sandpaper. Hit it with a little bit of uh, anti-seize. And I'm going to show you what the, the rotor that we wanted to put on looks like compared to this stock rotor guys so i just want to show you what was the mistake i made and what it should be now the thing is with the sport rotors and on the front the front were bigger physically bigger now with the rear they're actually the same size the diameter. difference diameter is the same but it's the thickness as you can see this just has one disc. I think they consider this a solid disc, while this is a ventilated disc. And then the problem that you're gonna run into if you order the wrong ones is that the carrier, which this is the old carrier here, if you try to put it on, it won't fit because it's too narrow and it won't fit the disc in between it. So this is the problem we have when, like I said in the first video with the front brakes, is that we're probably either going to have to return these to get the solid uh, single disc solid uh, rotor but I believe you can't get these drilled if it's solid what do you think Al? No you can't get them. I don't think they, they, It'll they'll be too do much it. Of a weak point. It may be too much of a weak point like what my brother said. I'm not 100% sure because I do see other yeah, you do see it, but I'll be honest but I'm with you, not sure. I've never seen the solid with drills. Or, or they just don't offer it for the, uh, for the Mercedes so yeah. We're going to try a, another option. What we're going to do is we, I'm going to see what we can do with, with the brakes that we bought, which is these beautiful drilled uh, vented rear rotors. But for now, what we're going to do is uh, show you the finishing process using the old stuff we have here. But what I'm also going to do is let me show you what the parts are for the upgraded pieces that we're using. So guys, so it was my fault. I ordered the wrong rotors, but let me. Sh we're gonna finish this video showing you how to change your rear brakes on a 2010 ML350. 
But I am going to show you that I did order the right brake pads. And if you want to go to these Brembo semi-metallic, so you, this will be a little better than stock. You're going to have a little more bite. Um, the number is that P50064. And these are the Brembo's. And they're not the fully ceramic. These are the semi-metallic. So you're going to get a little more bite. So they're a little more of a performance pads. They're not as nice as the fully ceramic where it saves the rotor. It's going to have more of a bite. So in terms, you know, it's going to wear a little on the rotor. It's going to wear more than the, the ceramic on the rotor, but you will get better brake performance. So let me open these up just so you can see what they look like. Now, just like the front, it has this uh, retainer. This clips into the uh, brake cylinder side or the... Uh, what do you call it, Al? Piston side. Yeah, there you go. So this clips into the piston side, and this side it rests on the on the caliper bracket side. Or you can put them both in and slide them on. We're gonna show you how we do that. Now this already comes with the the backing plate. Now what you can do is put some uh, brake uh, grease on the back here to stop squealing and and uh, noise. It's I think it's like brake quiet some sort of lube that you put on the back of these uh, brake pads. But uh, Al right now is gonna show you with the stock rotor how to put it back on. Because as you saw from earlier. The... Now I could actually feel the teeth of the gear inside of here. When I took this, I lined it up to this little circle right here that's indentation, but I moved it halfway back and I can catch the teeth. But if you wanna make your life easy, just draw it up a little bit here first. So you're just taking this gear and you're opening it up this way. You're just turning it downwards and that's expanding it out wider and wider. And all you wanna do is feel a little bit of drag when you get it on. And if you could feel that little bit of drag and you're good. Now you can always go till it's fully tight and then back it off, which is the best way to do it. But get it close. If you get that little bit of drag, even as you press your handbrake, it will adjust up to take up the slack. So take your time, get it to have a little bit of drag and then you're good. There you now go. we're going to have to turn this back to our set screw. Just right there. Got to go find my set screw, which is right here. You're going to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on it. Now you don't got to go crazy on it. So Loctite's on it, that's good. There you go. Okay, now you're going to put your caliper carrier bracket back, back on, yeah. or carrier. And these are 18 millimeter Correct. bolts that you're going to screw that on with. A little bit of Loctite on them, blue Loctite. always you're gonna take this part like this and you're gonna have to squeeze this in yep. like that As you can see these are nice my brother likes to put this one on first here which he may be right that looks like it fit better yeah see did i tell you it's easier doing it that way i mean you could do it either which way but uh i like doing it that way this is a size seven millimeter to tighten these up that up all the way now the spring on this side is actually much easier because there's no hook at the end you just catch the bottom when that's in you hold it in and that's it and there you go that pretty much concludes your whole brake job and once you get this done like we stated like we stated in the first uh, video when we did the front brakes you're gonna have to set bed these in and the process or the process that I use is first make sure you have a good brake brake pedal feel 
you know, do a couple of really sh slow, soft stops to make sure you have a good brake feel that you're not having any leaks anywhere. And then you're going to take it on the road, slowly go up, you know, 10, 15, 20, or, you know, up to maybe highway speeds 50, then come down to a slow stop. Uh, not all the way, not all the way to a dead stop because you don't want it to uh, sit in one spot for too long. You want to bring it down maybe five, 10 miles an hour and then you know continue until they're cooled down so you want to you want to give some time in between each run so the brakes cool down if you're going to be doing some highway speeds now that's the way we do it you know normally i wait either early in the morning late at night when there's not too much traffic so people aren't thinking you're crazy that you're pressing on your brakes on the street but that pretty much uh, concludes doing your front and rear uh rotors and pads also, I just showed you guys what the upgrades we're going to be doing. I wanted a drilled uh, rear rotor and front rotor, and I wanted to do the Brembo uh, brake pads, which are semi-metallic. I'm going to put all the information down below in the description if you're interested in uh, the, the type of brake pads that we're going to be using, um, where I got the drilled, and, uh, drilled rotors from, which is brake performance. I'll put their link down below. Again, it was my fault. I ordered the wrong ones. They do offer the 330 millimeter and they do offer the 350 millimeter. You got to make sure which ones you have. So it might be a good idea to do a little bit of investigating on your car before you start ordering parts. One surefire way is to take off the rear brake, the, not the rear brake, the rear, the rear wheel. And it, or if you have a big enough gap in your wheel, if you can see that the rear rotors or a solid rotor or a single disc rotor not a vented rotor you know you have the 330 millimeter uh rotors rotors all the way around which is the front the front are 330 the rear are the same size but just a way to tell is if you have the single disc in the back so uh, guys i think that will conclude this video for today big fail big fail yeah yeah i screwed up i messed up but hey you know, sometimes you mess up and you find out something better. Maybe we'll figure out something better for the braking system. So stay tuned. I have an idea of what I want to do. So if it works, I think it's a win. If it doesn't work, you might not hear about it. And then the next video would be how we finally got the upgraded brakes on the ML350. So guys, again, if you're new to the channel, or if you've been watching for a while and haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, share this with your friends. I want this channel to blow up. I want us to get uh, more people viewing it. And hopefully these videos that I'm doing help someone or stop someone from making a mistake like we did. So until next time, guys, you can follow me on Instagram, on uh, Twitter, at Project Z Garage. And we'll catch you in the next video.